I guess I started making shrines uh, after I'd seen Mexican home altars in um, uh, books and things where, where and, and in Mexico, where people had built in somewhere in the corner of their home uh, a small sort of tribute to their, their patron saint or um, whatever, you know, usually Virgin of Guadalupe or something like that. But um, being uh, an atheist, that was uh, not an option, so I thought I'd come up with some saints of my own. And um, I guess Jane Mansfield was my first. And uh, yeah, because she inspired me as a person with her work, and uh, yeah, she was kind of a, a flawed person as well, which I liked. I do most of my work just in, in my kitchen, on this kitchen table. I just drag out all my tools and uh, make a, an incredible mess. I'm, unfortunately, I don't have a workshop as such, so I uh, have times when my apartment is just covered with, uh, with the bits and pieces from my shrines and, and books and, and magazines and uh, wood. And it, it's just uh, chaos, but it's, it's kind of when I get started, it's difficult to sort of put it away. And once I get the basic box, then, then I can um, start filling it up and, and decorating it. But usually the size of the box is dictated by the ideas that I have to, to put in there, you know, so, you know, I, I have a central uh, icon, if you like, to put in the, in the middle, you know, just be it a monster figure or something, and then I build the, the box to accommodate that and the various pictures that I'll use. I am drawn more to uh, the people on the fringes um, or, or the outsiders that are overlooked by mainstream culture, um, often because those people were more interesting, that they, they led more interesting lives. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, the, the world just doesn't need another shrine to Elvis. I guess I make my shrines because I just want to express my love for these particular people. It helps me appreciate them if I, you know, think about uh, all the, the work that they've done and uh, and try and try and bring little subtle elements of that into the shrine when it's uh, finished but then I have it as, as something to uh, to sort of uh, remind me of them this is a shrine uh, dedicated to link Ray the uh, guitarist, American guitarist. Uh, the exterior of the shrine is based on um, pictures I'd seen of uh, a converted chicken coop that he used to do his recording in. And uh, he painted um, Ray's shack three tracks because he just used to record on three tracks um, back in the 60s then. Link was famous for uh, recording a song called The Rumble, which was the first and perhaps the only instrumental ever banned. Uh, for inciting violence. Um, that's why I've got the uh, imagery of the switchblade. He played a Dan Electric guitar that um, I've made a dodgy copy of there. Um, some other imagery in there is one lung. Link lost a lung early uh, in his career when he went to Korea as a soldier uh, conscript. And, um, and that sort of led to his decision to become uh, an instrumental artist rather than a singer um, because he just didn't have the puff to sing. Uh, he's also part Shawnee Indian which uh, is the reason for the other little figure there. This is a shrine dedicated not to Godzilla but to the stuntman and actor who played Godzilla from uh, 1954 right through to 1972. He was the man in the Godzilla suit his name was Haruo Nakajima, and uh, he's justly proud of the legacy, probably the most recognizable character in Japanese cinema. Um, along with uh, Godzilla, he played, he played other monsters in various other monster movies. He played the, the Green Gargantua in War of the Gargantuas. He played Varan the Unbelievable in Varan the Unbelievable. Uh, he played the giant mole creature Mogara in The Mysterians. So he's sort of uh, not the most recognizable face in Japanese cinema, but he was in 
all of these great films. As you might have guessed by the, the masks uh, you saw around my place, uh, I'm a big fan of Mexican wrestling where a lot of the uh, wrestlers wear masks and uh, perhaps the, the most famous of all Mexican masked wrestlers was a character called El Santo, which uh, translated just means the saint. Um, he wrestled from the 50s through to the 80s. Uh, when he died, he was buried with his mask on. Um, his career spilled out of the, um, the ring and onto the silver screen. He made 50 movies where he, where he played almost like a superhero character. Um, but unlike uh, superheroes from the United States and that, he, he wore the mask the whole time and uh, supposedly in his own life continued to wear the mask, like going down to the supermarket. And, uh, yeah, he's just an incredible character. It's, it's a work of devotion. So when I'm putting together a shrine for someone, I, I watch their movies or I, I listen to their records and, and uh, all the time while I'm doing it and become quite absorbed in that particular person. Um, yeah, it's a bit obsessive.